Hello, Chairman and Board of Directors. My name is Lexton Bunting, and I am part of your leadership team here at Sheen. For this presentation, we will be going over a key underperforming dimension of business, the negative present and future consequences of this underperformance, analyzing our current organizational structure, design, and culture, and how these correlate to our organizational effectiveness, our relationship with the conscious culture and management, and how this is relevant for improvement, a plan for improvement using Cotter's eight-step change model, and finishing with personal reflection of lessons and strategies that I will strive to either avoid or engage as we implement these improvements. So we are representing the company Sheen, a virtually based fast fashion business that has grown exponentially within the past few years. Sheen started in China around 2008 by Chris Zhu, a U.S. national and entrepreneur. At the beginning of his startup company, Xu started formulating and creating a business that stood on the pillar to, pillars of cost efficiency, fast production, and global channels of distri distribution. Recently, we have been making great strides in the fast fashion market as we have generated over $23 billion in the last year, an estimated 40% increase in revenue this coming financial cycle. Our revenue has put us in the number two most grossing, grossing fashion company in the world, beating the Swedish fast fashion brand H&M and just $3 billion away from Inditex, the parent company of Zara Clothing. From our business model, business leaders and academics have coined our marketing strategy as ultra fast fashion due to our low cost and progressive channels of distribution. The eight main dimensions of evaluation that are most admired within business, according to Fortune magazine, are innovativeness, quality of management, long-term investment, value, social responsibility, people management, quality of products and services, financial soundness, and wise use of corporate assets. All sections of evaluation are important due to the positive consequences of conscious capitalism and should be considered as each give a benefit to our competitive advantage of this company, as well as create a conscious culture among all stakeholders. Now, sadly, as a business, we have been accused of global workplace environment violations, as well as unsustainable and environmentally unfriendly practices. Therefore, the underperforming dimension that we will be focusing on today is people management. There are three main examples I want to bring to attention. These are firstly, unethical pay for workers within our manufacturing plants in China, with sources saying that workers make around two cents per item made. Second is unethical working hours with our manufacturing plants with investigative resources claiming an 18 hour workday for some factories. And number three is loose oversight and management of sub subcontracted manufacturing facilities causing poor working condition and little guidance to employees. From our underperformance of people management, as seen by the accusations of unethical work environments and equal pay and minuscule management, there are two present ramifications that we are facing and one future consequences that we should consider. Firstly, lawmakers within the United States have called for an investigation into our alleged use of forced labor within our subcontract and manufacturing facilities. Secondly, we are presently, president presently facing a lawsuit filed under the Racketeer Influenced and Corruption Organizations Act, otherwise known as RICO, due to stakeholders claiming that we have broken copyright infringement due to little, little management oversight. Thirdly, it is paramount that we consider mass employee abandonment due to our current working conditions and productivity expectations. As our company is built on fast acting production, the loss of our employees would mean the stop of sales and therefore a mass loss in revenue over the coming financial cycles. Firstly, our current, firstly, sorry, our current organizational structure can be defined as pre-bureaucratic structure due to splintered subcontracted manufacturing facilities and our lack, lack of task standardization. This internally influences our business strategy negatively due to us being a low cost producer. It also has the geographic, we also have a geographical and consumer based divisional structure because of our wide reaching channels of distribution and diverse consumer demands for product. Lastly, we are a virtual organization with much of our consumers buying from an, our online store. Uh, because of this online presence, we have opened only small office spaces around the globe, such as Los Angeles and Hong Kong. Uh, Manufacture or sorry, external factors such as our competitor Timu opening storefronts in the United States push us to change our virtual based organization to have a physical presence in the market.
There are many negative consequences that can be blamed for a lack of organizational structure advancement. Due to our organizational structure being pre-bureaucratic, there is very little formula, formalization of company values, uh, policies, and norms, which could be the reasoning for our alleged actions of copyright infringement. Our virtually based company also hurts our stakeholders due to the lack of media richness within our communication. Our company has tried to put out a statement on our ethical business practice and the policies we enact with our manufacturing facilities, therefore creating a better foundation of enacted organizational values and norms. However, the espoused organizational values and norms and assumptions of our employees continue to, continue to flourish a negative, strong culture within our organization. Sadly, our company sheen does not embody the principles and values of conscious culture and management. To explain, conscious culture can be quoted as a value-based culture that is intentional about how people act and perform. Due to our underperforming dimension of people management, our organization does not orientate, orientate itself to the needs of stakeholders and therefore dehumanizes the work environment. Secondly, our management style, seen as a laissez-faire leadership style, is crude and destroys our communication pipelines. Embodiment of conscious culture and management is paramount for its relevance to improving organizational functions in three separate and distinct ways. Firstly, researchers have concluded that conscious management and the adoption of a servant leadership style leads to more effective communication pipelines and work engagement for employees. Secondly, flexible leadership styles which embody conscious management are positively correlated with positive organizational culture. Lastly, conscious culture creates a work environment that supports self-expression, innovation, and a higher purpose for both employee and higher leadership. To bring about necessary improvements to our company, we will be using Dr. John Carter's eight-step process for leading change. The first step, creating a sense of urgency, has already been done for us as we face two federal lawsuits from the United States government, a copycat market competitor and multiple news agencies reporting their findings from our manufacturing facilities. Secondly, ooh, ooh, bless me. Okay. Secondly, we need to start building a guiding coalition, which means that all higher leadership and management at Sheen need to have this change in the forefront of their strategy. This change is only as successful as the starting coalition's perseverance. Our third step would be to form a strategic vision. That being said, I propose a changing of our organizational structure to be a centralized organization with a tall bureaucratic structure and wide reaching span of control for managers. This change will lead to more managerial oversight for our manufacturing facilities, as well as an increase on work environment supervision from higher management. The indoctrination of cross-functional cross teams for quality assurance and copyright will also be necessary. To achieve this, we will need to enlist a volunteer army. We can achieve this in two ways. Firstly, to promote certain employees into managerial positions from the production floor and promote a marketing campaign to show our organizational restructuring to consumers. Fifth, we need to enable action by removing barriers. This can be done by establishing uh, team meetings for each cross call cross-functional team and establishing a small office space uh, around hubs of manufacturing facilities. This will increase our communication and media richness, therefore contributing to more innovation. Next, we must generate short-term wins. This will be done by the creation of milestones and key performance indicators on employee job, satisfa so job satisfaction, uh, quality assurance, and um, just overall productivity within the next two to three cycles. Seventh, sustaining acceleration must be guaranteed during our transitioning phase. Higher leadership must be open to the changes and to any ideas on how to improve policies and strategies. Finally, with the, co with the continuation of uh, KPIs, quality assurance and managerial oversight, our change will rev revolutionize our business model for the better and constitute a conscious culture. The first challenge that Sheen faces when making these changes are the realigning of espoused values and norms. To combat this, Sheen needs to be dedicated to promote a culture of inclusion, which can be seen by implementing better systems for minority representation. The adaptation of conscious leadership styles and managers will also lead to changing negative espoused values and norms. The second challenge is from external pressures such as the United States government and bad press. 
To fix this, we must enact an open communication strategy to all stakeholders through press releases, open financial data, and marketing campaigns to realign our consumers to our higher purpose. Thirdly, the hardest challenge would be to implement a more focused corporate governance mentality through the use of better formulization of policies, purpose, and rules among our employees. This can be achieved by, through a potential subsystem realignment of corporate policies, sustainability milestones, and managerial oversight of work environments. As a reflection, there, there are three main lessons learned when discussing organizational structure, design, and culture. To start, our business must be focused on stakeholder orientation to promote a positive and innovative work environment for all employees and middle management. This, using cultures, conscious culture ideals will help employees understand the higher purpose of Sheen and therefore reorient, it, reorient their perspective of all stakeholders involved from, from a foundational level. Secondly, open communication is paramount when planning organizational change as these changes can lead to conflict when not communicated well by higher leadership and managers. Open communication is also important in stakeholder orientation as consumers will see the positive effects of our changes. Lastly, to ensure success with organizational restructuring, we must strive to have a vision that has depth within our organizational structure and is sustainable for our stakeholders in the long run. If the change is not sustainable, this can lead to job abandonment and unethical business practices, the exact thing we're trying to fix. With that being said, thank you so much for your time today, Chairman Marnie. Uh, and please let me know if you do have any questions via email or direct message. I would love to talk to you more about this topic and would love to know your opinions afterwards. God bless.